What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and it's time for me to build our new server. The team is growing, we've got more people now accessing the footage, so we actually need to have a way to have a central place for all of this footage to be grabbed. Look at all these hard drives. Any guesses as to who supplied these? Yes, I'm actually working with Linus Tech Tips and Seagate on this project, so we've got a whole plethora of Iron Wolf Pro drives, 10 terabyte drives, but we gotta build a server here. So anyway, that's actually not the point of today's video though. I wanted to kind of tease what's coming up. Today I'm actually gonna show you how to do cable management. Probably one of the most recommended videos I've ever been asked to do. And usually I'm like, you just zip tie the thing to the thing and put it out of the way and you're done. But uh, it continues to be requested and I thought what better video to do that on than a video that has a ton of hard drives and a lot of power cables and things to try and make that look pretty. So if we make that look good, you can make anything look good. Today's video is brought to you by NordVPN, and right now they're giving my viewers 77% off a three-year membership using my link in the description below. Guys, it's 2018. We are more connected than we have ever been. We have smartphones in our pockets, our laptops, and we are on the move. So it's time to start taking your internet security serious. Now, VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and it does exactly what it sounds like it should. It keeps you private when you're connected to the internet. You never know who's looking at your information, so stop them by encrypting your data. Now NordVPN uses a military grade encryption and they have more than a thousand servers in 61 countries across the world and that number is growing every single week, including regions like China and the Middle East. With the constant changing landscape and laws and litigation regarding net neutrality, it is more important than ever to take your online security serious. So save 77% off your three-year membership at NordVPN by using my link in the description below. That's nordvpn.com slash jays2 cents. So let's talk about the parts that are going in this build real quick. This, we'll start with the main platform. This is the X299 uh, workstation from Asus. So you might notice I have an X99 board or box up here because that's what they sent it in. This was actually an early access board. I don't know if it's fully out yet. Uh, I'm a little disappointed. I'm gonna say that up front simply because they dramatically stripped the number of SATA ports that are on this. The old one had like 14. This one has six, so I'm really disappointed, which means the build is not going to be fully functional today because I have to add a SATA controller or RAID controller on there. So there's going to be, some are going to be on the RAID controller, some are going to be on board, which kind of stinks. I would like to have all been handled on board, but I digress. That's not that important. We'll, we'll get that working out. So we're running a 7900X 10 core 20 thread CPU. Uh, we're going to be running, I want to run 64 gigs of DDR4. I've got 32 here for now. We'll probably be adding more to this because this is gonna be an interesting build. It's not just a NAS, it's gonna be also doubling as a workstation. So it's gonna be a physical box and a virtual machine and a server all in one. So that's where this is obviously a little bit different than the typical like 45 drives project that Linus was working with and with Seagate, mine's gonna obviously be tailored to the needs that we have here. Now I've got a Titan XP. Actually it's a Titan X little p. No, not a little p, whatever. It's always, it's confusing, it's always confusing. This is not the newest one, it has a DVI port. But we're not actually using this for gaming. This is going to be our pass-through. This is gonna be used to actually communicate between VM and physical box, not for gaming. So we're using this simply because of the amount of CUDA cores and the throughput speed that this has. So don't confuse this as a gaming rig. And we also have two one terabyte SSD now drives. These are gonna be our cache drives for all of these spinning mechanical drives. So that's what these are gonna be for. Uh, you guys might notice here, we also have a Master, a Master Watt Maker 1200, big giant heavy power supply. Because of all of these drives and stuff, we're gonna be adding as much power as possible just for safety. We're gonna be cooling it with the Celsius S36. Now it's torn on this because this is also doubling as a server, not just a workstation. We want reliability. So that's why we are not doing a custom water-cooled rigid tubed or any of that stuff because if something fails in this system, we need to be able to fix it fast. And if we're going with a custom loop, fast is not really part of that algorithm. So we're gonna be using a Celsius S36. Now the reason why I'm going with an AIO, because I was still kind of torn on doing that versus air, is because this system is also going to be rendering videos and it's doubling as our ingest station which means it's the, it's the station that we're gonna be bringing all of our footage to our server. I wanna keep the CPU as cool as possible because it's gonna be doing, it's gonna have allocated cores for the VM, it's gonna have allocated cores for the rendering station. We wanna keep it cool, that way we can run faster clocks and get better performance out of uh, Premiere. But the reason why I chose the Celsius S36 specifically is again, one cable to make all the fans work. So I don't wanna have a lot of cables going everywhere. And an AIO is easy enough to replace 
if it goes bad. And then we are gonna be putting this in the brand new Gunmetal Fractal Design R6 because of all of that hard drive support. And I can still fit a, a front mounted uh, radiator if I wanna front mount this or we can put it on top, but I don't have to sacrifice drive storage or water cooling, I can have both. And because I can fit all of those hard drives in there, that is why we chose that. Now I've got 15 of these terabyte, or these 10 terabyte drives. That's 150 terabytes. I don't know if they're all gonna be going in this build right now, but we're gonna be putting in as many as we can. So we've got a few extra drive cages that we stole out of a couple of the other R6s we have laying around here, just to get as many as we can in there. So without further ado, let's build it, and then let's cable manage it. So obviously we just built all of this to give the perfect, well, this is like a perfect storm. Look at, these are all the cables I've got to get to fit inside this box neatly. So what I like to do first of all when I'm doing my cable management is I connect everything to the power supply first. A lot of people like to connect it to the component and then to the power supply, but I find it easier to deal with if I've got the power supply pre-mounted and all the cables hanging out. Now I haven't installed anything yet cable wise except for the front panel connectors and the USB 3.0. I've got my fan headers over here. So we're gonna, we're gonna see how well I can actually do with this. this is, I've got my work cut out for me because I chose also the uh, master watt maker, cooler master maker, maker, whatever they call themselves now. The, uh, look at this, 24 pin connector. This thing is massive. I mean, this, this, is, this is like an OBD2 scanner for a car. Anyway, so what you notice here is I have all eight drives put in right here. Now, one of the reasons why I have it arranged like this is you can see I still have room down here for excess cables. Now, you might look at this and think, well, that's blocking off all the airflow. It's actually not. There's quite a bit of gap in between each one of these hard drives. So this is set up pretty well. We've got a little bit of airflow up top. We've got airflow on the bottom. So I think this is a really good example of making sure you have enough space to hide cables because Really, cable management is nothing more than hiding them and then trying to route cables together. Now, something else you're gonna need, obviously, is zip ties or lots of twist ties, something to hold the cables together. And what you're gonna notice I do when I'm doing this is you're gonna find me zip tying things together and then clipping it and redoing it and clipping it and redoing it and probably wasting zip ties, but it's because I like to kind of hold things in place while I'm planning, and then when I'm done at the end, then I zip tie everything together. Now I'm gonna set these aside for now. These are gonna be last. And the reason why I do this last is because if you've ever dealt with SATA power or SATA cables, these little plastic tabs are easy to break off. So as we're moving cables around and stuff, I don't wanna accidentally break anything on our nice expensive hard drive. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna kind of separate our power based on logic. We're gonna take our 24 pin, we're gonna take our PCI Express cable, the PSU power for this motherboard, or this, this PSU is a little interesting, where normally they would split into two four pins at the end. Cooler Master just chose to split it, apparently, all the way down the sleeve. So I'm gonna set those aside, because now I can visually see, okay, this, I know these are for main components. These are all my SATA plugs for my hard drives, my fan controller from Fractal, and then our two SSDs right here. Because I've got length on this, and I've got pigtail on this, I want this, to be a part of this cable harness that's gonna go this way. So now I know, okay, I need one harness that has three going over here and two harnesses over here. Because I've got, as you can see, four SATA connectors per cable or per harness, I've got two of those going this way and one of them going this way. So you can kind of see I'm sort of visualizing now how the separation of the wiring is gonna go. Now fortunately, the R6, has a lot of well thought out cable management tie down spots. We've got Velcro straps here. We've got loops all over the place to allow us to zip tie to. So I'm gonna go ahead and do now the main components and get those out of the way so that I only have to deal with all of our, all of our accessories. So the R6 also has its very own fan controller on here, allowing me to have, again, one connection point to deal with pretty much all my fans. You'll notice what I did right here though, is I kind of took the length and then I sort of just folded it over till I had sort of a clump of wires here, if you will, 
and trying to make it all sort of the same length. So we'll kind of do that again so you can see. See, they're not exactly the same length, but if I take them and just sort of fold it like this, now we've made a single harness here. It's gonna be much easier for us to just zip tie and get it out of the way. Something else that really helps too is to have a set of side cutters so that you can just sort of snip it and move it out of the way. I'm sort of just getting things where I want them to be, then I will clean it up. I don't try and do it all in one pass. So let's go and take this behemoth of a 24 pin. I'm gonna go ahead and use this guy right here and I'm gonna just sort of push this through like that. I'm not gonna plug it in yet, I'm just gonna sort of get it out of the way. Same thing with my PCI Express. I'll have both of these cables coming through the same grommet so that again, I can route these together to get them out of the way. Now I don't think I have anything else that's gonna actually go up through this harness right here with the Velcro. So I'm not gonna tighten it down yet tight. I'm just gonna sort of route this like that. Again, I'm dealing with visuals here. Visualize it. See, already I Velcroed this one I shouldn't have because I'm gonna do eight pin EPS power up through here as well. Usually I'll come up like this for eight pin power, but I think in this case, because I don't have a lot of length, I'm just gonna have this follow up through the main channel as well. And then I'm just gonna push that through for now. So if I flip this around, you can see, oh my God, this is heavier than I expected it to be with all those drives. You can see nothing's plugged in yet. We still have cables just sort of flopping around here, but that's because we can't start to strap anything down in the back until we have all of the slack out of the front. So that's why I kind of do things in this, in this manner. I just sort of slowly give things a, a way to go and get them out of the way. So we are almost to the point where we can start nailing this down. This guy, I think I'm just going to leave running right along the bottom right here because this is what's gonna get power to my two SATA drives here and my fan controller. And then these are the two that are gonna go here. Now, instead of routing this around the outside of this support bracket right here, I'm gonna put this on the inside because I've got more room there, so why the heck not? But I think this is the part that a lot of people make mistakes on. They just start tying everything down as they're plugging in, and then they realize, oh crap, I need to redo it. Now, as tempted as I am to start plugging these in, I'm not gonna do this yet. Again, I want anything to do with SATA power or SATA cables to be the last, because I don't want to break those plastic tabs. So now, we're gonna start plugging things in on the front side. So this has to kind of fold this way because of where the little retaining clip is. So I'm gonna push that back through. And I'm gonna go ahead and give me my bend now. Plug this in here. And there's that. And as you can see, because it's flat cables, I just routed it all flat like that. And now the slack is sticking through on the back side. All right, so I'm just gonna relocate it to this bottom grommet here. So it looks a little less crowded up here. Although the appearance of this truly doesn't matter, this is a purely function over form build, it would bother me. So the only thing left to do on the front now is going to be our eight pin power, which is up here at the top. And this one is usually pretty tight. So I like to lay the computer flat. I mean, it's just a whole lot easier to install these when the case is flat because you're looking down, it's much more natural. So again, just push the slack out the backside and now we'll work on the actual cable management. So remember how I said that these cables were kind of twisted in there? So what I did was I unplugged these from the power supply side so that I can sort of lay these all flat like they need to be. And now I'm gonna start sort of zip tying these together as a sort of a harness. They're flat cables. They're designed for them to be able to get really flat, obviously, behind motherboard panels and case panels. So it's gonna allow you to have more room. Plus you can see just how much neater this is. But what I'll also do is I'll get a few started, but I won't crank them down as tight as I can because I wanna be able to slide them along the harness if I need to adjust where they're actually you know, grabbing onto our cables. Tighten those down. Cut off our excess. And you can see we get a much neater appearance here. So, and look at that. I mean, would you just look at it? <laughs> a little zip tie pro tip that I like to do is just once these are done and clipped is just sort of rotate that behind. That way it just has a nice cleaner look. But now that we're done with this cable, I can go ahead and plug this back into the power supply side of things and get this out of the way. Okay, so the next area of focus that I'm gonna focus on here and I'm saying the word focus a lot. Let's focus on all the focusing I'm focusing on. 
we are gonna do the same thing with the eight pin EPS. There's a loop right here on the top of this case. And this is what we are gonna to use to strap it down up top. Now that loop is probably gonna be kind of hard to push a zip tie through. So what you can do is you can take the end of the zip tie and sort of bend it like a hook. So you can take this like a hook and just sort of hook it through the eyelet there. And money. So now that that's ready to go, we can just sort of collect our wires up here at the end of our zip tie. And then these guys will be ready to go. But once again, don't tighten it down, just get it started because we might end up needing to move this guy because we wanna control the amount of slack we have down here too. And we can do that up here by actually allowing this to sort of bend like that, if that makes sense. So make sure we don't have too much slack on that side. So I'm pretty comfortable with how that is. I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten that down enough to where it won't move. So with the flat cables, you wanna try and get them to be as flat as possible. Make sure they're all sort of going the same direction. And then you can zip tie them down on the radius, in the middle of the cable. And then for me again down here on this radius. We're gonna clip these little tails off Try not to clip any wires. I have done that. I have clipped wires while clipping zip ties. Rotate these so they're not showing. And we're gonna route this guy right here next to our 24 pin. Now our 24 pin PCI Express and eight pin power are done and out of the way. So I'm gonna do this area next. Uh, I've got eyelet here, here, and there, which is awesome. So because I know I need SATA power here and here, I just kind of want to get it somewhere in this part of the case. If it's there, then it's more dangly and in the way. On this part of the case, we still have open, unobstructed space there. I'm not going to put anything in this eyelet because I want to have some slack right there. I mean, I could, I'd still be all right, but maybe I'll do that at the end. Now, in terms of the SATA cables, I'm not going to route this up and around because as you can see, that would not work. So I'm just going to go ahead and focus on getting these plugged in and back in their spot. So it's better to remove the drive when you go to plug it in than to try and finagle. Because again, if you're trying to get it in there and you put too much force on this plastic, you're gonna break it. So unhook it, do yourself a favor. And then once you get it, put it back on the case, tighten it down. There we go. So there's that one. So I'm just gonna kind of squeeze those wires together like that. Take the slack. Plug this into, let's go to this one. So we have an extra slot left if I ever need it for lighting or something. And then I'm literally gonna just sort of push that kind of out of the way. Now we're gonna do the power, uh, PCI Express power cables for our graphics cards. Exact same philosophy that I showed you when I did the eight pin and the 24 pin. Make it flat, zip tie it together, snip our little tails off of there. Have your tools out of reach. That's an important part of cable management. And then we are going to just, we're gonna borrow this one right here. Now, we're, cause we're not gonna be going back in there, now we can pull it fairly tight. And that's what that looks like. Here's what we've got left. We've got the two SATA harnesses for our hard drives. And let's just start four up. One, two, three, four. Plug this guy in and give it a little loop. Plug that guy in, a little loop. Plug that guy in, a little loop. And plug that guy in. Then we take the loops gently, and don't put any lateral force on that. Gently flatten the loops. So now we're gonna do the same thing and we're going to run on the left side of the SATA. We can't run to the right side because if we do, we have the SATA plugs right there. And that worked out perfectly. So now if we go Fourth from the top, one, make a loop, two, make a loop. So we do the same thing, so we give a little crease. We can run that one right over the top like that. And there is our power for our hard drives. Last thing I'm gonna do, just like you guys saw me do on the other ones, I'm going to zip tie these two together right at the bottom. So now I'm just gonna do the same thing with USB 3.0 and zip tie these together. Anyone that's worked with USB 3.0 cables know that they are, they are a mess. They are stiff. They don't want to bend. They're always in a double harness like this. And they are just a complete pain 
but they are a necessary pain because USB 3.0. So the HD audio, I'm just gonna kind of push. I'll go along the floor that just to get it out of the way, but I'm not hooking this up to anything because like I said, I don't use HD audio for anything. I never use front side audio connectors. So this already looks great. I mean, everything is managed. You can tell where everything's going. I mean, could you ask for anything better? Oh yeah, we're forgetting something, aren't we? SATA cables. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all these SATA cables at once here, but it's the same logic that I just uh, applied and showed you guys with the rest of the case. The only reason I do these last is because like I said, I don't want these plugged in, getting yanked on and breaking the plastic tabs on the drives. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do this. We'll come back at the end, see how it looks, and then we'll wrap it up. But guys, this is how you take a case like this, 10 hard drives, including the SSDs, and make it look I mean, that's better cable managed than some systems I've seen that have one hard drive. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, see what this looks like when we're done and we'll wrap her up. Well guys, here it is. This is what the front looks like, and this is the business end, the side you see. This is the part where most of the time, if people are fine with how this looks, they don't care how the backside looks. But obviously this is a tutorial about cable management, and this is how it looks even with all of the SATA cables. So you can kind of see what I did right here. I've got the cables routed together. This is a separate harness of cables. This is gonna to go to my SATA controller for my RAID controller when that comes in. So I've got them harnessed and ready to go. So once that's plugged into my PCI Express slot, I just plug those in and we are good to go. But you can see we don't have a huge clump of cables down there. We've got good airflow. Everything is easy to trace. That's what cable management's all about. Being able to trace your cables. If you have to fix something, replace something, rewire something, then you're able to see where it is and follow it easily. Anyway, you guys have been asking me forever to do a how-to cable manage video. This is it. I chose probably one of the more difficult scenarios with all these drives. So it scales down from here. All right, guys, we're gonna go now. Thanks for watching today's video. Um, if you guys have any suggestions, let me know. That's how videos like this come about. If you're new around here or you enjoyed today's video, why don't you consider giving it a like and subscribe if you're new. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. We will see you in the next one.